have been made love to all my life and I'm the passive recipient of sexual advances. Yep. Many women would feel this, right? In my law of attraction with Graham, Graham is forgive me for saying that loud, Graham. Shut down and doesn't make those attractions to me. Yep. So in our sexual relationship, um, he's not doing, I'm not the passive recipient, which is profoundly uncomfortable because I've only ever been that way. Yep. And he wants me to come outside of myself to ignite the passion in him. Yep. That's our law of attraction. I have, my question is, how do you unlearn these lifelong trappings for one little way of putting it? Yeah. Well, firstly, both of you obviously have opposite injuries. This often happens in soulmate relationship where you get together with your soulmate and you work out actually you have totally opposite injuries. In other words, your injuries aren't compatible. So you don't get along good with these injuries because they're not compatible with Especially each other. Especially when it comes to sex. Especially with sex in this case. This is a beautiful thing to help trigger each of your emotions. Does that make sense? Otherwise, you'll just finish up having no sex. We <laughs> don't. <laughs> and it doesn't feel very good, does it? No, I'm no. going to leave. So, yeah. So, so instead, deal with your... Don't worry about Graham's emotions. Deal with your emotions about why you do not want to give and why you expect the man to give to you. What I'm saying to you is that I feel like I've been trained. I know I've you've been trained, but there's an emotion. There's an emotion underneath it. It's an emotion of anger with men, an emotion of, there's, there's quite a few emotions underneath it for yourself. If you deal with that emotion, you will trigger his emotion. Is it a childhood thing? Yes. From parents or do I... No, it's from your abuse. It's from your abuse, darling. Oh. Yeah. It's very hard to get... You understand... I understand the event. I'm owning the event. It's very, very hard as a child to get below the event to, to you know... How do you feel when the man doesn't give to you and you have to give to the man? How do you feel? I absolutely fury. Okay. The fury covers over the deeper emotion. So go outside, get a punching bag, go outside, express your fury. Why are you furious? And you'll connect very rapidly to what it's about. You know, already know what it's about. Why are you furious? It's, it's grief, it's like being over, overcome, suffocated, and not, not being able to exist. I feel like I'm non-existent. So it's about, it's about sexual rejection, isn't it? Is it? What's the feeling? The feeling itself. So it's grief. See, this is the difficulty. So much pain. You know, like trying to put into a box. Yeah, we'll talk about this the next time we talk about sex a lot because we want to talk about how to deal with these emotional injuries. But you identified firstly you feel fury. Go into that fury. Not with Graham, because he's not the cause of it. No, he's laughing most of the time, which makes me even more angry. <laughs> Yeah, no, if he, was, if he was an absolute shit, you'd blame him and you'd feel totally comfortable doing it. That's the problem, is that, is that in the end you do want to blame him. This is why you're in fury, right? Let yourself feel your fury, go out and really express it, but understand that underneath the fury, like you identified, is this terrible, terrible, deep grief that you do not want to feel. And when you choose to feel it, this fury won't happen anymore, and you'll feel that grief. And when you feel that grief, you will also then feel, oh, wow, I'm allowed to express myself sexually. 
and you might also have to deal with, of course, some shame and other emotions as well based on the abuse. But when you feel those emotions, you'll be able to express yourself sexually and not expect the man to do it for you. But at the moment, there's a very, very strong expectation in you that the man does it all and you just lay back and enjoy it, right? And but you he has get... the same thing. He, so, to say, he expects me to do it all. So, I'm, he, never asked, he never asked the question. You asked the question. You're repeating on here saying that for you. The answer for you is, get out of this, like, does he get furious with you? If he does, he doesn't show me. Okay. <laughs> Your fury is capping deeper emotions that you do not want to feel. And I agree, Graham's got some other issues that he needs to allow himself to deal with. Thank you. Of course I said that in the beginning that you didn't even hear. I said, let's concentrate on your issue. You're the one asking the question. Right? You can't change Graham no matter how much you want to, but you want to. Yes. And that's why you... <laughs> so you can avoid your emotion, Jen. Yeah. But I'm admitting it, okay? If, yeah, that's great. That's great if you're admitting it. If I own it and I sit here in the corner and I don't speak up, then I'm not, I'm not trying to push, push through, okay? Yeah, no, it's great that you're admitting it, Jen. It's great that you're admitting that you want him to change. But that, de <laughs> that desire for him to change means that you can get away with not changing. And that's really what you want too. You he's want doing the same thing too. Oh, I don't care what he's doing, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Honestly. You don't want to change, so you get furious because you want the other person to change. <coughs> Anger is often because you do not want to change yourself and you want to change the other person, right? It's to do with expectations that are unloving, right? So use the relationship now. I know I'm being unloving. I am just furious with Graham for not pleasuring me up, right? Right? And doing exactly what I want and making me feel good and me just lie there and enjoy it, right? Can I borrow your red band, please? <laughs> So, so that's how you feel. Admit that. Admit that. You've admitted it. Now go into what's going on emotionally as to why you're so angry. Right? And you'll find it's a lot to do with you want now to control men to do it your way, do it when you want it, how you want it, and it's to do with those emotions that you need to release. When you release those emotions, the irony is, is whether he wants to or not, he'll probably finish up getting triggered and dealing with some of his emotions. See, the reality is I feel that I can't feel sexually whole unless he participates. Th that, but that's an error. The, rea that, the reality is that's an error. At this point, I don't see that. I know. Well, Jen, if you didn't know your soulmate, you can still reach at, mar at one moment with God, can't you? Yes. Yeah. And to reach at one with God, we have to fully accept and embrace our own sexuality and sexual identity. Is that not true? So, in your relationship with God, and to release the emotions, that's all you have to focus on. Okay. It sounds simple. <laughs> well, the reason why it's not simple, it's not simple. The reason why it's not easy, we should say, it is simple, but it's not easy. The reason why it's not easy is because I'm so addicted, in your case, you're so addicted to getting the man to do what you want that you don't want to give that up. Right? And that's why you're furious. Because you don't want to give that up. And admit to yourself, I don't want to give that up. Graham, you've got to do exactly what I want. When I want, just pleasure me whenever I want. <laughs> allow, allow yourself to feel that, right? Allow yourself to feel that and then go into that emotionally and you'll find there's a lot of rage and anger with men in there and there's a lot of rage and anger with your dad in there that you need to let yourself express and experience 
and this is a beautiful relationship, like Graham is not being pushed around by you, which is really good, actually, because that triggers this emotion. <laughs> that triggers this emotion, doesn't it? I'm talking to you. <laughs> yeah. You asked the question. <laughs> oh, that's an injury, Jen. <laughs> Is she and Loki? Yeah, no, I'll let her say say what she wants to say. Well, all of us women who find it hard to hear truth from AJ, we all have man injuries. <laughs> Speaking from experience. And by the way, I didn't remotely control that. <laughs> But honestly, um, if, if I have issues with women, and I'm a male, whatever those issues are, I am going to continue to feel those until I let them be triggered. And so, for Graham, yes, yes, he does have some issues with women controlling him in the past. Because there are some issues with his mum controlling him in terms of emotionally controlling him and causing these sexual injuries, yes. But, but if you want to progress towards God, it's immaterial what he's doing. What's, what matters he's is... He's so soulmate. You can be at one with God without him. Honestly. But do I want to? Well, if you don't want to, then there's something wrong with your desire. How, how can you, like, embrace all the wonderful things that you're talking about today yeah. and then accept the reality that you're not going to go there anymore? Yeah. You can still have soulmate. For me, that's like... Walking the path to hell. It's yeah. like, it's hellish, really. But Jen, you've got an emotion about needing to have a man, needing to have a partner. Is that true? Um, I don't Remember what he said about the difference between need and so desire? You can't live without one. If you could live without well, one, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get into fury every I time have. you do it. I have lived without one. No, I know you have but you get into fury every time. It's just with Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, you can be at one with God without Graham. So you can heal all of your sexual injuries without Graham. And also, one injury you'll need to heal is this terrible neediness you have of Graham. Right? And it's not loving. It's not love that's based on another emotion. So look at what it gives you. When he does exactly what you want, how do you feel? But he doesn't do what I want. That's the <laughs> You're just saying sexually he doesn't do what you want. Honestly, if you look That's at... That's all I was talking about. Yeah. In all these other different areas, he does plenty of what you want, right? And so you need to look at what emotion is being triggered in you that causes you to feel the way you feel about this sexual interaction because it's to do with a sexual injury. And my recommendation to Graham is, don't touch a man. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> of course I'm joking, gee. No, what I'm saying is that... No, you're not. I am I'm joking. joking. No, you're not. I am joking. Jen, the irony is that the minute you deal with this emotion, Graham will feel more compelled to touch you. Yes. And this emotion is a very controlling of men emotion. And that's why he's not compelled to touch it. Now I can talk about with Graham, if he asks the question, <laughs> from his perspective, yeah, what his emotion is. Sorry? See, now that's anger. That's a lot of anger coming from him. Yes. So now you need to do it. He perhaps doesn't want to expose his own sexual life like you do. So you need to also look at that. Why is that? Why do you want to pressure him into doing what you're doing? That's not love, Jen. So if it's not love, look at what's underneath that. What's the emotion? What's driving me to do that? To force another person against their own free will. What's doing it? And particularly to force my own soulmate against his free will. That's not love. Now, perhaps he's feeling that, hey, this isn't loving. I don't know if I can do this if this is not loving. Perhaps that's what he's feeling. And you need to consider that. Does 
that make sense? Let yourself work through that.